friends welcome back to free engineering tutorial on operating system and in this video we are going to start disk management okay and the first heading under disk management will be disk formatting okay so firstly if we want to store any data we have to divide the whole disk into several sectors these sectors are of fixed size and usually we are taking 512 bytes or 1024 bytes as sector size so to recognize any storage data firstly we have to make ensure that disk controller can read and write that sector okay so for that we have to do disk formatting so this is the need of disk formatting now our disk formatting is of basically two types okay one is low level formatting and another is physical formatting okay so these are two types of formatting in low level formatting what we are doing is that we have to inject our data structure okay which will recognize any file content and physical formatting means we are just simply dividing the sec sectors or dividing the disk into several sectors okay and there are error correcting code which are there in the data structure so this is low level formatting okay now coming to the next slide so there are two types of disk formatting which are happening or there are two steps which are involved in disk formatting so firstly what is this this is partition okay we have to partition the disk in such a way that uh, the whole the data part is uh, on the other side and all the data structure part is on the other side okay so for that we have to partition the disk in such a way that it forms cylinders okay so the operating system can treat each partition as though it were a separate disk okay so as there are different file contents or there are different sectors we are partitioning the sectors in such a way that they can be treated as a different disk okay now the second step of the formatting is we have to implement the data structure into the sectors by which it can recognize any storage data okay so this is called logical formatting after partitioning the second step is logical formatting where the operating system stores the initial file system data structures okay so this is the important thing data structures are being stored in logical formatting and uh, if there are large number of chunks which are present in data means storage device or disk we uh, usually use clusters okay so clusters are the collection of many chunks of data it is known as clusters okay now as we know that in each sector firstly there ha we have to store boot block okay so boot block is uh, not a very complex thing it is just a simple thing it is just like a switchboard to any room okay i had given uh, this example already so this is just like a switchboard for any room and uh, to get into any room firstly what we have to do we have to switch on the lights okay so when we are rebooting or starting our operating system or our computer system firstly boot segment will be called okay so this is called bootstrap program okay now when we are calling or executing our bootstrap program our operating system or our disk controller will tell us that where is the data present so it will give us the origin address or header address from where we have to execute okay so this is the starting address of the data which we have to execute in the sector and uh, the bootstrap is stored in read only memory okay so this is the memory which is already there every uh, time it is present means it is hard coded and it is read only there should be no written operation which is there in the read uh, means read only memory so this is free of viruses or worms okay it cannot be infected because it doesn't have any write privileges okay uh, we cannot write read only memory rom okay so this is all about boot block and there are bad blocks also okay so what are bad blocks there are some memory spaces or sectors which cannot be used again these are the flaws in any disk okay so what is the solution for these bad blocks okay so the one thing is uh, bad blocks are coming from the factory itself okay in any disk uh, by the manufacturing defect bad blocks are present in the disk the other way around is that when we are using our disk because of uh, severe usage the there are bad blocks which are present after some time okay so these are two types of 
scenarios from which bad block can occur. Now we have to get some solution for these bad blocks. So there are different solutions but the best one which modern day computer, uh, computers are using. So these are sector sparing or forwarding. Okay. So firstly what it will do is that it will identify what and all are the bad blocks in the disk and it will replace these bad blocks with the some spare sectors which are there in the disk. Okay. So when we are encountering that bad block, the system will redirect our uh, pointer or handler to these spare sectors. Okay. And from there, we can read the data, execute the data and again came back to the previous data location. Okay. So this is the concept of bad block. Now for bad block, these four type of steps are happening. Okay, so I'm giving an example that uh, the operating system tries to read logical block 87. Okay, so this is logical block reading. Okay, let's say the address location is 87. Now our computer or controller encounters that this is a bad block or bad sector. So what it will do? It will report this to the operating system. Now operating system will do the rebooting at the time of rebooting or the next booting when uh, by the time when the sector ba means bad sector report is issued means when the bad sector report is issued after it whenever we are booting our system then it will take the account of that bad block and it will spare or slip. Okay so there are two type of process. Uh, one is we can spare the means we can use the spare sector okay or else we can just slip that sector so these are two type of techniques which are used for any bad block and uh, an operating system can use either of them okay so after the next time the system is rebooted a special command is run to tell the scsi controller to replace the bad sector with a spare so there are two type of te techniques which I told you one is to replace okay and one is to slip just remove that bad block and after that whenever the system requests logical block 87 okay so whenever it requests 87 it will redirect our handler to that location that is spare lo uh, sector location okay so this these are the four steps which uh, from the help of example I'm explaining okay. So due to optimization factors, most disks are formatted to provide a few spare sectors in each cylinder and a spare cylinder as well. Okay. So there are uh, different uh, disks or type of disk where we have spare sectors. Okay. So for each and every disk, we have different spare sectors. As an alternative to spare uh, sector sparing, some controllers can be instructed to replace a bad block by sector slipping. Okay, so this is just removing of that bad block. Now coming to swap space management. So in swap space management, what we are doing is that uh, because of very large quantity of data, so we are uh, making a logical image of any file. Okay, so for making logical image of any file, we have to swap the space. Okay, we have to swap the data between any space. So this is called swap space management. Okay. So virtual memory uses disk space as an extension of main memory. Okay. So as to uh, visible to the user, we are using virtual memory and virtual memory uses disk space as an extension of main memory. It just uses main memory. Okay. And since disk access is much slower than memory access. Okay. So because it is not uh, there in the processor or in the CPU, it is external to any computer system. This is because it, these disks access are slow. Okay. Using swap space significantly decreases system performance. Okay. So because of these, we are using different ca caching techniques. There are secondary caches, primary caches. So there are different types of caches means data bank from which we can import the data. So that is the totally different thing. And uh, goal is to provide the best throughput for the virtual memory system. Okay. So talking about a swap space use systems that implement swapping may use swap space to hold an entire process. So what they are doing, it is storing full entire process or full image of the process. 
now what happens if the process is very large okay so we have to swap the space between disk storage and virtual memory okay so both are there in the disk only but we have to swap the space okay so it is safer to overestimate than to underestimate okay so what we are doing is that we are taking the maximum possible memory from the disk for virtual memory management okay so we are not taking very less memory for these type of purposes because if we are encountering any type of uh, means issue at the time of execution of process then the process will abort and then our time or the execution time of the cpu will be wasted okay so we are just ignoring that uh, thing and we are taking very large amount of memory or at least the possible amount of memory where abortion will not occur okay now overestimation wastes disk space there is no uh, means doubt uh, that uh, this swap space use if we are taking overestimation then it will waste space but it will never abort the process okay so this is the advantage and overestimation waste the disk it is disadvantage okay now as we know swap space uh, location so this approach through easy to though easy to implement okay so this swap space is easy to implement if we are taking a large amount of memory okay so if we are taking a large file okay if we are taking a very large file it is easy to implement but it is disadvantageous in several ways one is it will means it will give us fragmentation fault okay so there are different types of errors which we are getting so one is fragmentation issue okay so it will take extra external fragmentation it will give us internal fragmentation because of large amount of file okay and we can improve performance by caching the block location okay so this is what i am talking in previous slides so because of this large amount of file as it will take large accesses large seeks accesses this is why we are using cache for the block location okay and uh, alternatively swap space can be created in a separate raw partition okay and uh, because of using swap location in any disk we are uh, just using an empty disk okay or any empty area for using swap space location okay so just using a separate raw partition what is raw partition just empty where nothing is stored nothing is scooped okay and swap space storage manager is used to allocate and deallocate the blocks so all these things which we are doing in swap space allocation so here it is done by swap space storage manager and uh, as we know swap space is volatile so it is reinitialized at boot time so any fragmentation is short lived okay it will be erased as soon as the system will be booted so in next video we will be talking about protection and security and the slides guys i am using in this video you can access from the last video of this module and also like follow and subscribe this channel to get more educational videos till then thank you